Uh, hello everyone, my name is Kyung Ti Kim. I'm from Purdue University. And today I'll be uh, talking about our work, HFR, hybrid, hybrid fuzzing under Linux kernel. And this is joint collaboration between Purdue University, KAIST, NEC Labs, and Oregon State University, and Seoul National University. Uh, random fuzzing and sample executions are two representative security analysis techniques, but they are so powerful and they've been making significant contribution to finding a lot of bugs. But each of them has its own limitation. So uh, first, the beauty of random fuzzing is to explore many different execution paths so quickly, but unfortunately, uh, they cannot address such strong branch condition very well because of its, well, its uh, random nature. But symbolic and concrete execution, on the other hand, is able to handle and generate such input for a particular path. But state explosion is its well-known limitation. So in this regard, uh, hybrid fuzzing is recent advanced testing techniques. So the basic idea of it is to combine traditional fuzzing and concrete execution so that they can complement each other. So by using that, uh, co strong branch conditions can be easily handled by concurrent execution, and while they can maintain fast path exploration without state explosion. And in recent years, uh, many hybrid fuzzing papers have been published in security conference, and they of course showed a better coverage and better finding performance compared to traditional techniques. And so we noticed that here, they are all targeting application programs. So we thought, what if hybrid fuzzing is applied to kernel testing as well? Uh, software vulnerabilities, uh, vulnerabilities are still the biggest threat to operating system, and it's even worse because uh, kernel is high privilege software. So once kernel is compromised by attacker, attacker is able to control the entire system. And also, uh, since kernel also have a lot of uh, strong branch conditions as well, uh, hybrid fuzzing can help improve coverage and uh, find more kernel bugs. But the question here is, is hybrid fuzzing good enough for kernel testing? We would like to bring up three issues here. Uh, this is a simplified example of uh, indirect function call using function pointer table in the Linux kernel. So on the left, we can see CMD variable that is derived from system call arguments. And this variable is eventually used for the index of the uh, function pointer table. The definition of function pointer table is on the right. And taking one element of that, a corresponding function is going to be called in the end. So from Fudger's perspective, to improve the coverage, they should definitely target all the elements of the uh, function pointer table. But this should be done by only mutating this CMD variable. This is because this CMD variable is user controllable and it basically determines which function is going to be called. So can hybrid fuzzing uh, mutate this variable uh, so enough to take the, all the function in the function pointer table? This is really difficult because without any prior knowledge, hybrid fuzzing does not know this variable is going to change control flow in indirect way. So operating system basically maintain a system state and system call is one possible way to change such a system state. So here we would like to bring up an issue of dependencies across system calls. So let's think about this open write system call first. The write system call should definitely follow the open system call with valid file descriptor. Otherwise, you will return immediately with an error because of invalid file descriptor. But this is obvious system call dependencies. So what if such a system call dependency is not explicit in the definition of the system call? Well, let's consider this example again. And it seems two IOCTL functions do not have code relations but let's see what is happening inside of the kernel. But when first IOCTL function is called internally, the, the alloc function is going to be called. And in that function, 
A certain global variable is assigned to ID field of the argument, and this ID would be returned back to the third argument of the IUC TL function in user space. And in the following IUC TL, this basically ex expect to have the same ID value, and that value is going to be uh, that value is going to be compared with the same global variable again here. And if their value are the same then they can execute the following main functionality code normally. Otherwise, it will return with error and cannot see the following main function code. So to, uh, to achieve better code coverage here, the third argument of a two IOC TL should look like this. In particular, this ID variable, its value should be the same at runtime. Uh, unfortunately, hybrid fuzzing does not handle such a, uh, inside system core and parameter dependencies. So lastly, we should think about individual system cores other than uh, system core dependencies. So how can you mutate such an unknown typed argument for the f in the first place? In a naive way, we can just randomly generate some values with arbitrary length, but it's not going to work well in case of complex argument structure. Well, let's see this example here. When this IOCTL is called internally, it's followed by two copy from user functions. What copy from user function does, it basically copies memory buffer from user space to current space. And when we look at this code carefully, we can see two copy from user functions are related. In particular, a source address of the first, uh, second one depends on the destination address of the first one. So after that, in order to reach a function, main functionality code at the bottom of this ex example, The third argument IOCTL should look like this nested argument structure. Without maintaining such nested argument structure, this system call is going to return at the early stage of its execution because of uh, invalid memory access or some similar problem. Unfortunately, hybrid fuzzing does not handle such a nested argument either. So we introduced new hybrid kernel fuzz HFR uh, to the best of knowledge, this is the first hybrid kernel fuzzer. And hybrid HFL is coverage-guided and system core fuzzer. Uh, as a hybrid fuzzer, it basically combines fuzzing component and symbolic analyzing component. And for better communication between the two components, we deploy agent component in the middle. It also addresses the challenges in the Linux kernel we brought up. Uh, to do so, we provide separate solutions. I will explain them one by one. So to handle first challenges, we do static conversion from indirect to direct function call using explicit conditional branch here. By using that, by doing that, we can just let the fuzz know the branch coverage status, status in an easy and explicit way. It can also uh, it can also uh, facilitate the transition from fuzzer to symbolic analyzer. And for system code dependencies, our solution is broken down into three steps. We first statically collect read-write pair of global variable in the Linux kernel. And this analysis should be uh, into procedure and field sensitive. And the result the result is probably first patch tip, so we need extra runtime validation here. And before execution, we first symbolize this third argument of the ISCT for later parameter depend dependency inference. I will come back to this very soon. So during execution, given dependence pair, if two instruction points are hit, and we check if this dependency is true dependency or not by comparing their addresses. If their addresses are the same, then we can think of this dependency as true dependency. 
and we start to keep track of parameter dependence here. So based on the uh, propagation information of global variable, if two ID fields are involved, then we try to extract offset of each ID from the beginning of the argument. Uh, this is done by checking symbolic state of the argument, which were already symbolized at the early stage of our analysis. So given all this information, we can infer uh, such a system core and parameter dependencies. And this, of course, would uh, fed back to the further for the future mutation. Uh, for nested argument structure, we are particularly focusing on the transfer function, such as copy from user or similar function. This is because transfer, transfer function is uh, best point to keep track of nested memory layout. So when we hit the copy from user for the first time, we symbolize corresponding buffer here. And in the following copy from user function, in a similar way to previous solution, we symbolically check these two separate buffers are nested or not. If so, we can extract this offset and give a final memory view like this, and we can infer such a nested argument structure. And this also can be used for the future mutation by fuzzer. So we implement our prototype using various uh, existing tools, while uh, agent component in the middle is written from scratch. So based on our implementation, we tested various Linux kernel versions. Uh, they were the latest at the, same, at the time of the uh, experiment. And we found 24 new vulnerabilities in the Linux kernel. Out of them, 17 were confirmed. And they, of course, have a, a serious security impact. We also tested bug find, finding performance of HFR by comparing with the uh, pure SIS color. And for this evaluation, we used 13 known bugs, which were found, found by HFR and SIS color in our experiment. And the result is HFR found all these bugs three times faster than SIS color. And we also measure the code coverage improvement by comparing with the five recent kernel fudges. And some of them have their own uh, code coverage measurements, so we use the same, same K-curve for the, all the baseline. And the result is HFL shows a code coverage improvement over the, all the other uh, techniques, from ranging from 15% to four times. So here we introduce uh, one case study of a system core dependencies. So this is the example of particular device drivers. So let's see what is happening in normal case. So when first the IOSTL is called, this case statement is taken. In the following, the global ID is assigned to the temporary variable here. And this ID is written back to the argument in the user space. And in the second IOCTL function, this basically expect to have the same ID value here. So try, this function is trying to ID value from the argument in the user space. And this is uh, checked for the, uh, this is checked, this, this function is trying to check the ID value for its consistency. If this ID consists, this ID is consistent, then we can execute the main uh, connection procedure here. If different, we can uh, return with an error here. So using our tool, we can think of this case statement as a strong, one of strong branch conditions. So this can be handled by our, our hybrid feature here. And everything else is covered by system dependence inference in our tool. 
So uh, we can extract and infer such a uh, system call and parameter dependency result. So let me conclude this presentation. We propose new hybrid kernel fuzzy HFR, and HFR addresses important challenges in the Linux kernel. And in our evaluation, HFR found 24 vulnerabilities and also shows a better coverage compared to traditional techniques. Uh, thank you for listening. Awesome, thank you very much. Quick question, was the PPP bug related to the recent O-Day? Uh, Mid last you, week there was an O-Day in PPP. Uh, was well, I mean, last you, you, I, you, you had an example on a yeah. PPP IO control yes. call? Is a it PPP IO control, yeah, okay. So, uh, PPP is basically, I, I don't remember the, the exact semantic of the PPP IO system. I, PPPIU CTL function, and but basically PPT stands for point-to-point -point transfer uh, network things protocol, right? So, uh, well, I don't remember it's the semantic of the PPPIU CTL, so I just follow the, the synthetic things. So, I think you can refer from our if you can refer to our papers for more sure. detailed information. Sorry. No worries. There, there was also an, uh, a recent bug last week that was published uh, uh, and announced that, that yeah. uh, allowed you to take over any uh, PPP installation. But that's yeah. fine. Okay.